Okay, well let's let's talk about adding some more content or about formatting your content. Um, we just talked about adding an image in uh, with some paragraphs of text and having the text wrap around it. Um, let me close that index file and open up maybe my file for resources. Okay, so here's the resources page and what I'd like to do is have a page to put, uh, I'd like to use this page to put some links uh, to some some other some other websites in like homework help links and books and things like that that might help out with um, what this website is about. So let me get rid of this resources page link here and um, or text there. So what I really like to do is have three columns of links and maybe with a little thumbnail above each one to make it look nice and a title for each column and uh, and then a, a, a place to put the actual links in in three columns. Now. Uh, when we're using tables, anytime you think, uh, start thinking about how you want to lay out your content, and if that content is um, anything other than just paragraphs, then you want to be thinking of, of using a table to do that. So I've got one big cell here, so what I'd like to do is insert a table inside of here. And since this is a table inside of a table, I want it to be 100% wide. And with that, it will um, it will make these columns, this table will fill the space that it's inside of. So I'm not sure how wide that that white column is, but um, this will make it so that it fills exactly fills that space. And I'd like this to have three rows: a row to hold the thumbnail, a row for the title, and then a row for the actual links themselves, and three columns. Uh, then I also need to decide here about my my padding and right now I think I'm going to turn the border on so we can see the borders um, that might help it make make it more obvious that there's actually three columns here and a little bit of cell padding inside of these um, cells will make make the text look a little bit nicer so I'm just sort of formatting a table that's going to go in there I'm going to click OK that table drops in uh, so it goes all the way across. Now each of these um, columns is showing, you know, about a third of the width, but um, that's just temporary. If I start playing around with it, those will sort of do different things. I need to tell it exact each one of these exactly what to do. So I'm just going to select across all all of these and come down to the width and tell the width to be 33 uh, percent, and that will lock those in. So the value of each one of these cells is 33 percent, and that will help them to. Um, kind of retain their shape a little bit. Okay, so the next thing I want to do here is uh, uh, put a thumbnail in the, in the, up in the top of each one of these. So I've got some thumbnails over here that I've already created. Um, we've got this little list here. Now I can't really tell what these images are, so another way to kind of look at the content that you have available is to switch to your assets panel. It's the same place we switched when we were, when we went to use our template. Um, but you can see there's some other categories up here. So I'm going to go up to the top of that, and there's a button for images. And when I select that, I can see a list of all my images in my website. It doesn't matter what subfolders they're in. And if I select them, I will see a um, little preview of each one of these. Okay. So I'm going to drag this one of chairs and drag and drop it right out here. And this is just uh, chairs. Okay, so that goes in, and it's not centered. So uh, let me just—I uh, want to get these uh, centered. So I'm going to tell it to horizontally um, center any of the content that goes inside of that cell. So you can see how now it, it evened it up there. It's centered. So I'll use that um, that thumbnail for the first one. I'm going to use this this one for the next one. This is uh, books. And notice how that one's centered as well because I dragged across all three of those cells when I did the centering and I'll use this one uh, for, um, we'll just call this blackboard. Or the alternate text we'll just put it in as blackboard. Okay, so now I've got my three, um, my three thumbnails in. And in this next column, I'd like to use this next column to put, uh, to put the, the headers in for each one of these sets of links. So I'm going to highlight those again. Um, and tell it to vertically center these titles. So maybe this set of links is going to be called class. Um, these are classroom links. This set is going to be called uh, books. And maybe this one over here is going to be 
homework help. So my three types of websites that I want to um, make available. All right, so I want those to look like headers a little bit. Um, so I can uh, select them uh, and come down and actually use uh, some text formatting here. And I'll, I'll maybe I'll just make them uh, use the heading tags here. And now these H1, H2, H3, maybe just H5. Let's see. Well, not H5. Let's try maybe H3. Um, good heading. So I can just use that same uh, same formatting there for each one of these H3. And then I'll know that they will all look exactly the same. Okay, H3 for that heading. All right. Uh, and then, you know, I'm, it might look nice if those had a little background to do, sort of break it up here. So I'm going to highlight that cell. And these cells, or this whole row in this case, can have a background color. And I might just use this background over here just to kind of tie it in with the, the rest of my page. Okay, so we've, we're just adding some content in. You know, now I have uh, a place to put the links, and I could just type those right in there. Um, and I'm not going to actually... Um, type these all out, but uh, this might be link one in this category. And if I wanted that to look a little bit nicer here, maybe I want it to be a bulleted list. So I'm just going to highlight that, come down to my property bar, it's like bulleted list there, drops that on, and now is just like in a word, press it, word processor. When I push return, I get um, another another bullet. Let me just type a few of these in here. Okay, whoops, I didn't get that pressed quite right. Let me just go back there. Just return. Usually in uh, Dreamweaver, when you hit return by itself, uh, and when you're typing text, it does a double space. It puts a paragraph tag and it does a double space. Uh, but when you're in a bulleted list and you hit return, it just puts another bullet and it doesn't do the double space. So if I wanted this same kind of idea here uh, uh, in these other columns, I'm just going to copy and paste it so I can see how it looks. Um, and then when I when it when it comes time to start actually putting in the links here, of course I'd change the text. And then once that text was changed, I could highlight it, come down to the link window, and here's where I would put the URL of the website I wanted this to go to. So let's just say make a link there and um, and now I have created a link just out of um, out of that text now since this link is going to be to someone else's website it's sort of traditional that when somebody clicks on that link that that website opens up in a new browser window um, so you can decide whether you like that or not um, you cert I, I would not recommend use it, having it open up in a new browser window when you're linking to one of your own pages, but when you link to someone else's, sometimes that's kind of a nice thing. And here's all you have to do. Just highlight that link again. And you can see down here in my property bar, um, there's the link field where I put in the link. And then over right next to it, I, there's a section called Target. And what I want to choose here, there's a couple choices here. Uh, the underscore blank, that tells your browser to open up a new browser window and then go to that whatever URL I put in there um, when somebody clicks on this one. Okay, so now I've got this little table in that I'm using to sort of format my text. Um, let me save that and let's just take a look at it in the browser um, to kind of whoops to kind of see how that is uh, formatting out there. So it's looking a little bit better. I, I don't really like this uh, table border around here. So I might uh, work on making that border a little bit nicer, and I don't really like this all this padding that is in this section here um, around these words. That makes this little header column way too um, thick. Um, all of those problems is are most easily solved by using uh, CSS. Um, but if I was wanted to try a little less padding, that's an easy thing to at least try here. I'm going to click inside the table come down to this HTML crumb, breadcrumb trail here, select the table, and I can change this cell padding to something a little less, maybe like five. Um, and it, I, I, I lose my nice cell padding around everything else, but at least that column looks better. Now, 
with CSS, which is coming um, in a future tutorial, I can set up different amounts of padding for, for different regions. So I could have some cell, a different kind of a small cell padding here for this region, but more cell padding on the other ones. Same thing with the uh, with this border. CSS will allow me to have a lot more control over what this border looks like. Um, I hesitate to take it out right now, but if I wanted to, I could just highlight that and um, change that to zero. That turns off the border, um, which is okay, but when I look at that in the browser, um, it doesn't quite give the effect that I want. It doesn't really show these columns um, in a way that I want them uh, to show up. So. Uh, a couple of options there just to, to get you started here as you start work, uh, st you're starting to work on starting to add content into uh, a, a website. Alright, well thanks for watching.